we're so glad that all 100 children did you one more again for zooming in on sustainability. This year, the Queen Quet head from the body of the Gullah Geechee Nation. I'm so glad that Hunter taught them not robbery, but join we one more again. Well, Hunter children, y'all believe this year, we don't do over 20 episodes or anything like that. And what blessing in 2020 for do something over 20. Okay, that mean Hunter children truly want Yeti what we to talk about when we to crack we teeth about sustainability. Well, this year did. We can start off like we do every time for this year's show. We want first take a moment of silence. This year did. We want to do this year for Cato, Denmark Vesey, Gulla Jack, Dr. Yusuf N. Clyde, Harriet Tubman, all oh, children for all these years, like Beach Lady Marvin Bench, oh, Ernestine Tobias Felder, yes, the Reverend Willis T. Goodwin. Halim Galabimi, all these your leader of the Gullah Kitchen Nation, went and cross over into the realm of the ancestors. But they go on fighting, they go on standing. And we won't say, but this is their one, what we about to lay to rest, said the doctor. Oh, this is for Hunter. Remember Hunter too, and we know what for do. Stay woke, like Hunter tell we for do. So let we take a moment of silence for truth. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I'm so glad if I did you one more again and thing like that. Like I said, this year the queen quite head from the body of the Gullah Geechee Nation. And I'm so glad that all 100 children to tune in to this year broadcast right here. And right of us, all 100 children that are watching on Gullah Geechee.tv. Gullah Geechee.tv. Go on your honor and subscribe for free. So always Hona can back and view this show and yet even more about who we be and then share it with your family. Cause see, plenty of we now know about who we be for true. Cause we ain't for see we near and take down from the paper. We never see we too much from the TV except the act up or the joke up and thing like that. Cause then one learn we the full story of who we be. But that's why we do what we have to do. But let the world know that we still there, we the been here, and ain't a going away to all talk. So, plenty of time, people are kind of the gotta get you. They just don't come here, but go into the beach on. They won't go to the crick show and thing like that. They don't get about so-called storytelling and thing like that. They won't be here for the party, for a festival and thing like that. But they won't sit the bunkers down. They get it. But the fight we take for step on this your land and for continue for stand as African people, black people, there in North America, that ain't no easy thing. We ever just try on so that we ancestors, when the Igbo, Mandinka, Malinke, Yuriba, Gola, Gizi, Mendi, Temdi, Ifi, Ibivio, but then try them all together. They come out strong as the Gullah Geechee. They don't just care about which individual name of your heart. They care about how to put them together. But they fight for what we right. That they have to be no channel all their life. So, plenty of time when Hunter Yeti will we. First thing first. And I Yeti will we. And we want language and things like that. But everyone can still crack your teeth like Alicia. That resistance is of itself. But many of us don't talk in our native tongue. We don't speak the way God blessed us to be able to speak as Gullah Geechis. In fact, some of us think that we shouldn't. Why do you think that way? Who taught you to think that way? Our language itself is a code of the spirit. The word Gullah, which is the same name that our language goes by and that we go by means people blessed by God. So why would you throw away your blessing? I know some of y'all say, ain't no why, but people do them every day. Somebody doing them right now, why we the crank we deep right y'all? I know, it's true. But that's because there's always resistance. If you're doing good things, there's resistance to it. If you want to get strong, you do resistance training. 
and you don't draw them with your dry hand, you normally pick up some kind of weight so that your muscles have some resistance to them so that you can be more steady and ready when someone throws a punch and you have some impact that you can take. You have to continue to build up endurance for that. So our people built up an endurance and a tolerance for a lot of miseducation, misinformation, misdirected energy in their direction as Black people around the world. But Retta was right, you in North America. So from Jacksonville, North Carolina to Jacksonville, Florida, and 30 to 35 miles inland to the St. John's River, our ancestors fought against enslavement, fought against being represented as slaves, meaning they were just tools that somebody else could buy, sell, use, manipulate, direct, and then throw away, gift it, put it in the will because we were considered tools too. Chattel, property. We were considered something that could be bartered, could be traded, could be gifted for weddings and other things. But what is it that some of us have bartered away now? Seem like some mother with grind, yona. Some people don't care about having common sense. They don't care about having respect. They don't care about having dignity. But all these things our ancestors and our elders had and taught us to have. So man is going to take on it where money can. In places that you go, you're going to meet other people. People came here, met us, and we were different people. But did they have respect? No. They said, oh no, there's something backward or ignorant about us who continued our African traditions, whether that was spiritually, whether that been a we cracking we teeth and thing like this show, whether that been a we shouting, oh, 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 oh freedom, oh, oh, oh freedom, oh, oh, oh freedom, oh, Bobby. All that, cause they have been a doing like a lady. Ha, but like I say, they have been dry long so. Hard metal so. So we would know how for cold switch. And like I say, in the Gullah Geechee proverb, ha, every goodbye ain't gone. Every shut all ain't sleep. So time, time, we've been act like we've been, but we've been a left out job. We've been dry day. Yet yeah, they have been a sea at the end. They have been the one here been a sea here. Especially when we were dead at in the wilderness. The plan for the victory over this your thing or slavery. But we had a chance to come out and show for who we be truly. So now when you see imagery of the Gullah Geechee, I know a lot of you already are thinking, sweet grass basket. <laughs> You're thinking rice field. Uh-huh. You're thinking cotton field. Mm -hmm. You thinking folks head high and down with the back bent. You ain't thinking about the guns that we use in the rice fields, even to keep the bubble links from now upon the rice and thing like that. It, that we were carrying guns and arms and we had that right even during child enslavement much less afterwards when we became the land owners of the very same land that we stood on, worked, and put our blood, sweat, and tears into. They don't show you those images, especially of women doing that. Well, that changed. And that changed when someone that I know very well and who has stood next to me, walked with me, been there for libation ceremonies, stood up and has been part of our human right to self-determination, started to use his gift to present new images of who we be. And I want him to come on this journey with all of you today as we zoom in on Gullah Geechee resistance and spirituality. So it's an honor to have Brother Nazar, who is the founder, the father of Gullah Geechee resistance art here with us today. And he has a virtual gallery that you can go through and also purchase some of his artwork. Y'all saw the opening screen for the show today. And you saw 
the power field imagery and probably wonder, whoa, who did that? Because more often than not, I know that's my reaction when he shows me a new piece of art. I'm like, well, I know who did it, but whoa, it's definitely there. Y'all know, like, whoa, right? Whoa, y'all know the song. So you feel like that when you see what he's doing, but others go, whoa, because they're not used to seeing African people with cutlasses, swords, guns, unless they are adorned in a United States uniform of some kind. But we were fighting long before the U.S. had their little war, brother against brother, as we say with big shoot and think men are stop. We were fighting long before that for who we be on this journey. And we're still on this journey to make sure people realize we know who we be. We be Gullah Geechee anointed people and we know we free. So thank you, thank you, Brother Nazar, for actually documenting how free we be. How honor to be today, my brother. We we excellent, Queen. It is 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 my divine pleasure to be with you today. And um, as always, I'm eternally grateful for you and the work you do and, and putting everything out there in terms of our great ancestors and what they've done. And what the, and that and that continuous fight, because, yeah. like you say, that was a fight that was marginalized because during the time they were fighting, mm -hmm. it was it wasn't it wasn't wise to let others mm -hmm. know that we were winning. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It goes back all the way to 1526. Yes. Yes. 1526, when a magistrate by the name of uh, Lucas Vasquez alone brought 100 Africans from the mm -hmm. island of Hispaniola mm -hmm. and attempted to build a colony. Yep. This is in 1526, long before Jamestown, Virginia. Come on now, mm -hmm. long before Jamestown, Virginia, and long before what? Charlestown. Long okay. before Charlestown. At, at, at least 93 years before Jamestown, Virginia, mm -hmm. 140 years before Charleston, the Spanish magistrate brought 100 Africans from the island of Hispaniola. And he attempted to build a colony at Winyer Bay, what is modern day Georgetown, South Carolina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the Africans were like, okay, not a problem. Take, right. take, off, the, take off these chains. We, we'll, we'll build your colony. Yeah. <laughs> and so, now let we go. Let we, let we go first. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And so once the chains were removed, mm -hmm. the Africans freed themselves that very year, that very month. Yeah. Okay with the assistance of the native people of that region. Right. And, and they continue to live and dwell in this area. So yeah. that, that, that revolution that occurred is, it's been marginalized. People don't yes, talk it about, it. you know, At they home. talk about Jamestown, Virginia, because oh. in that event, those Africans were enslaved mm -hmm. and they, remained enslaved. Remained enslaved. And that story is a regular standard American narrative, right? Is that the Africans get here, they become enslaved, and we keep them, right? And we, we don't want to talk about the ones who self-emancipate. Right. And so, so you know, and the narrative is that they prayed that a, that a president would come and free them one day. But wow. at Winyer Bay, they, these Africans freed themselves. So the Gullah War, Started. Which again is spiritual warfare. Yes. That, that that struggle to free ourselves in order that we can free others from what distresses and harms us. Yes. And so we, we always have to remember that that resistance and that, that that warfare is one and the same as spiritual warfare. Absolutely. People have a tendency to think spiritual warfare is a slogan, but really? it's not a slogan. No, we <laughs> know better than that. We know we it's not no that. slogan. That's we real power, real it. energy. Yes, yes. We have lived it and we have yeah. invoked the power. We understood that God was a God of an army of spirits. Yes. And that we can invoke our ancestors who intercede on our behalf in these battles. Absolutely. Okay. And so because people don't know about the vic victories that we've had yeah. before the Civil War, okay, yes. then they tend to have a tendency to, to, to see a lot of the uh, narratives and, and read into these fights where we wait for a great emancipator of right. another persuasion. Okay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if we, when we go back to 1526, 
and the Africans freeing themselves, the Spanish understood the power of these Africans because we freed ourselves from them and yeah. we governed them in Spain from 711 to 1492. So they right. understood that if you give them an inch, they'll take them out. So yeah, it's better. Yeah. Say again, Queen. I say, I say, any though, any though. <laughs> yes. 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 When, we talk, when we talk like this and that, they, they ain't know what we to say. So any though. Not, <laughs> Not all, at all. So wait, but let me let me pause you right there, cause see, you you're going deep down the rabbit hole now, like mm -hmm. I like to say. So let's jump in there with Brer Rabbit and them, cause you know, right, Jonah. When you say they say, let just take the chain off, take the chain off for us, That's right? Because right. right. how can we build anything without right. what we can? We can't build nothing. We got to have a hand free. So yeah, now yeah. let's 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 delve in a little bit right there because a lot of people may not be that familiar with, like you say, when you're big, but they might have heard of PD River region. Uh huh. You will also know for folks who are listening, if y'all know the PD River region, y'all know the PD River. This is that area. So right. you looking on Google Maps or anything, Google Earth, you trying to figure out what we talk about. It's that area. So y'all will hear it. If you read things, you'll see it written different ways. You'll read when your bay, you'll right. read river, you'll read all that, but you ain't gonna hardly read too much, but we, all right? right. But now right. you'll hear, and you'll even hear Spanish, but you ain't gonna hear African, right? right. Yeah. That kind of thing. So now let's get into this. Like you said, we joined with the indigenous people that were already here. Absolutely. So that was a that was the seeds right there for the planting of who we are as Gullah Absolutely. Geechee's. Those right. were the first seeds of Gullah Geechee's here in North America, fighting back from right. the start, right off the and ship, fighting. All right. right. So now, like you started going backward in time some more, and you explaining how these folks already knew we had already governed them elsewhere as African Absolutely. people, so they knew they had people of knowledge wisdom understanding and order and you know we are always taught decency and order here in the Gullah Geechee nation so let's go to this you heard me mention the word Gullah is people blessed by God right since we going back with the time I want to drift a little bit back forward go forward and go backwards at the same time sign Kofa this is the thing you have studied Hebrewism you studied resistance in terms of spirituality, like you said, people don't recognize spiritual warfare. Right. I know that you were one of the people in a delegation invited to go back to Israel uh -huh. many moons ago. And right. you and I had a conversation after that, how well the people greeted you when they right. found out you were of the Gullah. Absolutely. Now, some people are discovering online just where you was about to go in the discussion about how Gullah Geechee starts off earlier than being in the U.S., okay, earlier than being in North America, and they're tying it to the fact that in the Strong's Dictionary, the word Gullah is there. That's not yeah. new to me. That's not new to you. Right. But I wanted to make sure I had you on here because you and I had a very stimulating conversation years ago about mm -hmm. your experience once people heard you were that person blessed by God. You were right. of the Gullah. Talk about why they had such a reaction to you and how language even, the words we speak, are part mm -hmm. of the spiritual power that is mm -hmm. carried from the Hebrew into where you were going with Spain, into right. back here to the PD, and then we go and keep on going forward in time. Tell them a little bit about that, please. Well, when I when I arrived in um, Israel in, in 97, <clears throat> uh, I traveled to a place called Mispe Ramon with Prince Ram Ben Yehuda. Mm -hmm. And when 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 I didn't even know that they knew I was coming. Oh. <laughs> and when when I got there, it was a whole lot of people grabbing out bags and they took Prince Ram's bag. And they, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking this great uh, uh, reception was for him because, mm -hmm. you know, he was a man of great knowledge. He was one of my great teachers, but they were, I thought they were treating me like that because I was with him. You're with him. But then right. I kept hearing people uh, asking, where's the Gullah, that, 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 where's the Gullah man? Where's that, the man that's from the Gullah, Gullah lands? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, are they talking about me? Right. You're gonna look right, you're gonna say, who that is? That that of me. Any. 
so so we went to uh get our, our, our stuff settled in and and that afternoon that evening preparing for the sabbath to come in i thought it was just normal for for them to invite the guests up front well prince ron went up front and 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 they kept signaling for me to come up front and i said me I said, yeah so when I when I got up front and when the event got started, the priest prayed and they announced that they had this brother from the Gullah lands and all of this. And I'm like, wow. And so they asked, so when they opened the door for me to speak, I, I thanked them and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. After the event was over, uh, most of the, it was so many of the families that were so happy to see me. And yeah. they said, where's your, uh, who's yours king? Uh, I was saying, king? I said, well, we have a queen. <laughs> we don't right, have a king. Yeah. <laughs> right. but, but you're the Gullah people. Uh, and, and they knew so much more about me at that time than I knew of myself. Yourself, and, then, wow. and then the priest later told me that the prophecies said that we would be the ones to, to rise, the Gullah people. Mm. Because again, in our language, a lot of the yes. things that, for example, when we say them, these, and this, I was told mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, in the Hebrew language, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's synonymous or you find that in these words in the Hebrew language. But not yeah. only that, there's a prayer that goes like this. Kuma Yahuwah, v'yafusu o yaveaka, v'yanusu misaneaka, mipaneaka. The kuma Yahuwah is the same kuma Yahuwah as in kumbaya. Kumbaya. Mm -hmm. kumbaya. In the mm -hmm. Hebrew, going into Northeastern Africa, mm -hmm. and you follow it linguistically all the way down to South Central Africa, all the way across into Western Africa, mm -hmm. you find the Igbos with that, yes. with that same uh, uh, language. Yes. And, and so when we say Yahwa, Yahwa, mm -hmm. and the Igbos say Chuku, Chuku, Chuku. Mm -hmm. just those are the words for God. Yes. And so the legacy of Igbo landing, Mm -hmm. is not just one of resistance, but of, of the language that people speak. Mm -hmm. And they knew that these were those who are blessed of God, yes. who, would, who would invoke the spirit of God into their struggle yes. and will yes. always be able to do great things like that legacy of the evils walking on water and mm -hmm. going back to the land. Some around, but some didn't. Right. See, but, right. but that resistance was part of the culture of the people of Northeast Africa. So when I do the, uh, when I share the images that I painted, I, yes. I start with Taharka. And yes, no, yeah, yeah. He's in the book of Kings, the book of Chronicles, the book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. as the great king of Africa at a time when the Europeans considered the entire continent, well, he was considered the king of Ethiopia at a time when the entire continent was called Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Meaning the people right. with dark skin, right. okay? And so he's written of in these scriptures and they speak of him. But again, the Gola people trace mm -hmm. their lineage all the way back into Northeastern Africa, even right. basket making into Nubia and Northeastern Africa. Absolutely. Uh, you know, all of these things are intricate parts of our culture right. and, 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 and everyday use now. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So some and, of the things that I experienced in, yeah. in, the land, in the land. And you know, it's so powerful you mention that because some people who follow Gullah Geechee TV, they know that they saw the videos, and I'm sure you saw the videos and the pictures when we went to Morocco. Right. And so there was such an abundant welcome there of me being there in Morocco. And I mean, mm -hmm. I drank more tea than enough, all right? I ate more bread than enough uh, with all the welcomes there. And it's so interesting when you mention that I'm having flashbacks to different things that I saw and different things mm -hmm. that, you know, were reminiscent of things in our culture. And I brought yeah. back one of their rugs because I was thinking about the rugs that are made right there on Wamala right. and, and how it was so similar to me, what we call a rag rug, yeah, okay, <laughs> but how they do the process there. So I wanted to have one to show mm -hmm. people one of their traditions and how it ties to ours. But like you say, it's because that is that continuous part of history that flows right. from that part of Africa over to the West Coast, then we get over here. But now man, let me make you laugh because I don't think I ever told you this now. When we went to the Bahamas and they literally did exactly what they did for you in Israel. And I mean, literally rolled out a red carpet for me 
to get off on, to walk on. They didn't even want me to walk off the ship on right. the ground. They rolled the carpet from inside the door all the way out. And then they pulled the limousine up to the carpet after I did a press conference on the carpet. And right. then we got in the limo. Well, the next, that was one island in the Bahamas. The next day we arrived in the next island. Okay, they were late getting to the ship this time. So we get in a cart and they bring us to the front of the thing because we think, well, they come into the ship or they want us to come up to that building. But let's go to the building. We get to the building. I said, well, I don't see the ministry folks here. I wonder where they at, right? So I asked the lady, I said, sister, how you doing? I said, all right, how you doing? Okay. I said, well, I'm Queen Quet, chief just of the Gullah Geechee Nation. Has any of the ministry of tourism or ministry people been here already looking for me? And she said, we had, let me call someone. She said, hello. Yes, I have the queen of Africa here. She, I said, no, no, the queen of the Gullah Geechee Nation. Where is that? I said, the Gullah Geechee Nation. Yeah, the queen, where your name again? I said, queen quit. Queen quit, the queen of Africa. She is here. <laughs> so when you just mentioned to Harker and, and, and Ethiopia being Africa and him being the king of the whole thing, I had that flashback too about I am now called the queen of Africa. You know, And so we laughed about that for years uh, because our people, when they see someone in position of power and then they right. hear, wow, that's one of the gullahs, you are elevated, sometimes even higher than you're supposed to go. But they <laughs> elevate you upward because they have already heard the story. The stories right. haven't been forgotten. So like right. Brother Nazar just mentioned this, Evo Landing. The legacy right. of Evo Landing, this book that I edited a couple decades ago that has won awards, has been used in numerous universities since, mm -hmm. has been an inspiration not only to him, but to many others, because yeah. there is a component in this book called the Gullah Wars. That term was first brought into the world through this book and through the Dr. Yusuf N. Clyde, who his last book was this one, The Invisible War. This mm -hmm. is fresh off the print and press, Brother Nazar. This is the new one with my forward in front and your wow. photos, your imagery inside. So I applaud you. Yeah, I got show sure. up. I got my copy and you ain't got one. I gotta get mine. Copy, <laughs> you ain't got one. But yeah, but I, I come in your way soon. I, I bring on a one. Even if I have to meet me right here at, at the place of the Stone of Rebellion, right there where you live right down the road. Absolutely. I mean, your copy and you have to sign mine. But yours is so pretty. The only thing that that um, I'm not happy with, right, is because on the inside of pages, all illustrations are black and white. But right. the power of it is that even in black and white, your wow. art comes across powerfully. You can't right <clears throat> so distinctive. You can't not get the message. That's Whether right. It's black and white or color, you can't not get the message. I look at you looking at it hard to put my book with <laughs> You look like you were teeth my book and we over the airways. You look like you were cat my book. Um, so, but see, that's because you and I love reading. Oh. Uh, yeah, love reading. We love our story. And so definitely let's go forward. We uh -huh. were in the city. So now we got this fighting going on. We got this resistance going on. Mm -hmm. But then let's keep going. What mm -hmm. happened with Kittle? What happened with him? What been a grind on that? Well, <clears throat> One an important thing about Spain, Spain issued an a, a emancipation proclamation in 1693 that right. granted freedom to any African that made it to Spanish territory. Mm -hmm. So Spanish territory for us, once we landed on these shores, was Florida. <clears throat> Florida. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And so, so one day, September 9, 1739, Cato and a whole group of Africans, Gullah men, said, "Is it?" Exactly. They they entered into the they began first they began planning the uh uh escape from the Carolinas yes. into Florida. And mm -hmm. so on that morning, September 9, 1739, they stormed the armory, took mm -hmm. the weapons, they took out the guards. When they when they when they tell the story, or when the uh during that time when they told the story, they said the Africans killed the shopkeepers. These men were guarding weapons at the armory. And so they took the weapons from the armory 
they, they took out the guards and began freeing other Africans on the way to Florida. Mm -hmm. Now, they claimed that they killed all of them. However, no, they didn't. one year later, so many of them arrived in St. Augustine right. until they had to build a separate town. That's right. <laughs> okay? And not only that, but if, they, if only 100 of them got away and they killed most of them, then why did they advertise for over 2,000 escaped Africans wow. <laughs> during the same and period? To get back. Over 2,000, they advertised for these Africans that escaped. And the only great event between 1526 and the Battle of Bloody Mose the next right. year in 1740 was the Stoner Rebellion, Rebellion. Cato's Rebellion, the brothers yeah. who fled uh, the Carolinas, but not only fled, it was strategic. They began going to plantation to plantation. Mm -hmm. The 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 Anglo Carolinians that treated them well, right. they they didn't harm them, mm -hmm. but the ones that were cruel and brutal, yeah. they punished them. Right. And then they they began freeing people on the way to Florida. Right. And once they got past a certain place like near Ridgeland, South Carolina, today. Right. Now you're entering into Yamasee territory yeah, and the Anglos were so afraid of the of the Yamasee, they yeah. didn't bother trying to chase them all the way. So no, down, they, right. They wasn't gonna keep running down there because soon you were gonna cross over into so-called uncharted territory, which is right. now Georgia. Because Georgia wasn't set so-called settled yet by the European. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But, so but now this is deep though. This part where you say about them with the shopkeeper story, because right. You know, we've always read that as well. They went to Hutchison Stoke, right, right there at the border of what is Hollywood Ravenel, South Kakalaki, and then right. they just broke in the store. But I right. always thought about that. I said, oh, so it's a general store, but it was selling ammunition and guns. Right. But you're saying, no, the general store also served as the armory at that time, which only it, makes it, sense. It only makes sense. And this is, the, this is the thing. They always had to diminish our victory and, and elevate theirs. Yeah. And so when they, so when they, when they, when we storm an armory, that's a victory. That's so a victory. you, so you diminish it by calling it a shop, and you, and you get the image of an old shopkeeper and some savages that just killed them. Just kill this poor man that been in there to try to make it, just for right. trying to kill a few pig for the thing for people for making money for your family, and then you don't realize no, this Joker and his friends was the militia. And Absolutely. what they're trying to do is protect right. themselves and they so-called women and children because they right. always had this attitude about us being animals. Remember right. that three-fifths clause. We True. weren't supposed to be fully human. Three-fifths right. clause, they later wrote, saying mm -hmm. that we were not fully human. So they had this in their minds all the time because right. otherwise you got to say you're fighting a man. not Right? A, right? Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so, so from there, they... Uh, continued freeing people on the way to Florida. Uh, they got into a battle with the uh, with the militia because the lieutenant governor, lieutenant lieutenant governor William Bull, would just happen to be coming from the Edisto area, mm -hmm. and right in the middle of all of this, and he managed to get away, and he alerted the militia, mm -hmm. and that militia uh, assembled, and then they caught up to them, just where. I-95 uh, I, uh, and 17 intersect in that area in Ridgeland. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but it took them two weeks to capture the ones they did capture and kill. Mm -hmm. right. It wasn't overnight and it wasn't immediate. Absolutely. And, and some so, of the immediate ones, like I explain to people on my tours, whenever I'm right. talking about Stoner Rebellion, mm -hmm. a lot of the ones who initially got captured is because they were sleeping. They were yeah. resting. You That's were right. talking about a massive amount of distance to That's go right. from Johns Island, cross uh -huh. the river, get to what's called the King's Highway, which is now Highway 17, like Highway you 17. say, yep. and travel out of what is now Charleston County, through That's right. Carleton County, through right. Buford County, and right. you got to leave Buford getting into what the Jasper next um, on foot. I mean, for those of us who drive, you figure that's a long distance because that's a two and a half hour drive we done talked about. So don't y'all think it was no easy route or they just went a short distance and then got caught story. 
That's not it. So, of course, some people were resting when the mm -hmm. militia came upon them right. and got the first crew that they could capture. Then That's the right. others started fighting, taking off to the water, to the woods, to various places. So it wasn't no easy roundup. So right, yeah, right. go ahead. Mm -hmm. so, so from there, they went into Florida uh, with the Yamasee mm -hmm. uh, and created the, the Fort Mose, which was right. a town one mile outside of the main fort, one mile north of the main fort that is down in St. Marco and St. Augustine right now. And so there, they developed their own community. Yeah. Uh, they were free as long as they took on a Spanish name, right. uh, convert to Catholicism, right. and swear to serve in the militia for four years. Okay. And so they, uh, when, this, when the English got wind of these Africans that are free and had their own fort, they ended up sending uh, British forces to, yeah. to recapture them. Right. And these brothers defeated the British, the British at the Battle of Bloody Mose. Right. And it's, and it's reenacted every year in June of every year at Fort Mose. Absolutely. And so uh, from there, we got to, you know, and this is now 1740. Okay. Right. And I know now, people are like, wait a minute. Y'all only in the 1700s? Yes. Right. This why would we call it the Gala War? Absolutely. It's an extended period of time. It's not a skirmish. It's not we, a one-day battle. We're talking about a generational battle for resistance. Absolutely. So when we, we talk about Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose and people uh -huh. still reenacting this stuff, is to keep it in the consciousness and the memory of today. Absolutely. But more often not, this is the part you didn't mention was more often than not, people miss this part that was also documented. You mentioned how they try to minimize the story by talking mm -hmm. about the shopkeeper. But they also, the one document we can find that went out in newspapers that talks about the fighting says there are more Negroes in this war than Indians. Right. That, okay. Now, that was, that was General Jessup. Yeah. And, and Jessup, Sidney Jessup. Now, and that was a little bit farther when, when, when Jessup finally ad, 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 uh, acknowledged <laughs> that, that, that we have been at war for all this time. But yes. we were fighting on multiple fronts yes. because we, we, were, we had the Florida theater where we were fighting there. Yes. And then the American Revolution, okay, when, when you, there are those who you know, speak about the uh, Boston Massacre and, and Christmas mm -hmm. Adams, mm -hmm. but even greater much more important than Crispus Adams. Yes. There are four men from Charleston who when the British seized Charleston, they went to the British and said, we heard that if we came to the, to, uh, uh, to the British side, if yes. we joined forces with you, because we have taxation without representation ourselves. Representation, right. We want them too. Right. So when people start thinking about America and Britain, they leave out the Africans because- oh. Because Unless the Africans are enslaved. That's Africa. the only way they mention us, right. So now, when Boston King, John Kaisel, uh, um, Isaac Anderson, and Cato Perkins, this is a different Cato. These brothers yeah. were, uh, when Charleston was under siege, they went to the British and learned that if you came to the British side, that we would give you your freedom mm. as long as you swear to serve the king. Wow serve the crown and then um we will give you training and you we will bring you into our forces right. now you never hear about that you know you hear about christmas addicts who was the first to die in the american revolution because well, he died because, because he, was black and he died we always so he can hear if we die but we don't hear when we survive and thrive and fight back yeah but colonel ty colonel ty was a commander of the black brigade there was the e royal ethiopian regiment and yeah. the men we spoke of, the Boston King. Boston King was on a plantation, the Waring Plantation, 25 miles outside of Charleston near Somerville. Mm -hmm. And when the British seized Charleston, he went to the British to ask if it was true that if he came to their side, would he be granted freedom? He said, they said, absolutely. So he went to their side. They put him in a unit. They marched to Camden, South Carolina. 
the British forces were surrounded by um, the American forces. And when they got surrounded, Boston King had to take a dispatch and on foot run 27 miles to wow. get to one house where there was a loyalist who would let him ride a horse the other three miles to get wow. the backup from the British. And the yeah. British came and rescued 254 men that were saved by this one Gullah man. Now, he's a hero to the British, but to America, they might have to marginalize him because they don't want people to know about that, you know? Exactly. And so, so, so there are others who did similar, but one in particular, and I painted the image of, of these men. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac Anderson was born a free man in Charleston, mm -hmm. but he went to the British side too and left. And when he went up to Nova Scotia and mm -hmm. all of them eventually went to Sierra Leone and founded uh, Sierra Leone and Strategic Leone. Alliance with Britain. Right. So when they were in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. Isaac Anderson told the British, hey, see you guys later. Um, we're back home. We don't need you. <laughs> and so the British was like, no, no, this is the Royal British Company and we control this. And Isaac Anderson said, no, we ain't having it. Right. And so when the British would not relinquish Sierra Leone or right. Freetown, because Freetown. it was just really right. Freetown, he went to the Sherbo chief to uh -huh. get an African army to come and push the British into the sea. So this is what the British did. The British sent for 500 Jamaican soldiers yeah. and they brought 500 Jamaican soldiers and hunted him down. But wow. the fact that he made a stand against the British and the Jamaican soldiers is noteworthy because <clears throat> this is a brother from Charleston. This is a Absolutely. Gullah history. This is Gullah history. And, the, and, and, this is, and this is the part of Gullah history that mm -hmm. relinks us back for those of us who repatriated and went back to the motherland by way of Nova Scotia that's not discussed. Now, yeah. I lived in Nova Scotia um, mm -hmm. for a short period of time. And mm -hmm. so I was there because initially I did a conference doing the same thing we talk about today, relinking our story. It was called the Our Story and Heritage Conference. And mm -hmm. it ended up taking people on a journey from here in the Gullah Geechee Nation, fighting, like you saying, mm -hmm. going on with the British, Ended right. up on what they promised was good land, but turned out it wasn't far was it? land um, in Nova Scotia, and it get too cool up yonder. Mm -hmm. And so some of our people then left from there, and like you said, ended up in Freetown. There were other people who even ended up in Bermuda. Right. And there were also some that found the land they was on in Bermuda, or they didn't like that, they ended up in Trinidad, in and they Trinidad. called American. So American. we made this whole uh, Gullah Geechee diaspora link and the mm -hmm. ones who went back to the motherland in Sierra Leone, like you said, and resisted even there now, who let the right. British go, well, thanks for the ride. I'm back home now, right? right? They don't get talked about. What they keep talking about is what came this way from Sierra Leone, rice, yes. rice and rice and rice mm -hmm. and rice and rice. And I keep trying to get people to grasp Freetown, Sierra Leone, where Creole is spoken. Creole is the cousin or the sibling of Gullah. That's right. Why mm -hmm. is it there? It's there mm -hmm. because it was the mother tongue taken back from here to there. Quilting Absolutely. was even taken back to Africa from the Gullah Geechee Nation, from these right. sea islands. You don't need to quilt in Africa. You make other types of woven cloth like kente and, and mud cloth and things like that. But you don't need quilts because it's warm. Okay. Right. So why would they know to do it? Because it was actually native Gullah yeah. Geechee traditions that went back with this brother, others that went, because again, it was just constant regiments and boats mm -hmm. of people that chose to be mm -hmm. repatriated back to the motherland. So sometimes right. we forget to tell the whole story right, of resistance right. and that it is a global story of resistance. When we talk about the people blessed by God that are Gullah, that are mm -hmm. Gullah Geechee. But you know, I know you and I could be here all night sharing how long this journey continued even going into denmark bc and gullah jack and then mm -hmm. coming forward even to our human right to self-determination movement but i like to give homework so put your glasses on people if you need them order this book go to gullah biz gullah and purchase a copy of the invisible war 
for your library, for your house. Have this book. Do study groups around this book. You think Brother Nazar know all that because he don't study? Okay, scripture says study to show thyself approved and just talking about just the Bible though. You need to study. You need to know your story because right. otherwise the ones who do not know history are destined to repeat it. And mm -hmm. we don't want to repeat enslavement. We don't no. mind repeating resistance, but we don't want to repeat enslavement. But you'll end up marching wholeheartedly into slavery if that's you right. don't know your story. And a lot of y'all who think y'all taking it to the streets this year, y'all think that's something new? This ain't new, okay? You think that by taking a selfie yourself with a poster in front of you is something to be grand about. But your lives ain't in jeopardy on social media. Right. People's lives were literally in jeopardy. You talking about breaking in to places that are armed with people there call themselves armed God, guards. This ain't no easy thing to do. So make sure, get a copy of The Invisible War. We just released it on gullahgeechee.biz, gullahgeechee.biz. And Brother Nazar, your yes. art is in here, like I say, it's not in color and hair, but how mm -hmm. can people get prints and originals of your artwork? How do they find you? Well, there's a ARS Museum. Uh, well, it's, um, there's a couple of things. You can go to... Uh, ARS Museum or rssmart.bigcartel.com, ars.bigcartel.com, and um, you know there are work there. There's the the African Redemptive Struggle Museum. Uh, <clears throat> you can go to that website, the African Redemptive Struggle Museum.com, as well as uh, the Facebook uh, page. Gullah Heritage Museum. Excellent, excellent. And you can find him also as Abba Nazar, N-I-Z-A-R, on Facebook. Make sure that you follow him. Make sure that you support this brother. Make sure that you have this type of imagery. We talk about having a library at home. You also have to have imagery at home that even right. puts you in a mindset of resistance. Mm -hmm. If you have a bunch of bondage artwork around your house, or slavery people picking cotton, don't be surprised if everybody in the house is kind of bent over and sluggish and, you know, at times, because that's what you're constantly ingesting through your eye gate. What is going in your mind at all times comes in through your ear gate, your eye gate, mm -hmm. it, it's spiritual. And as he said from the beginning, this is spiritual warfare. So we're trying mm -hmm. to give you tools of truth to fight mm -hmm. on with. But don't start disrespecting the ancestors and the elders acting like y'all developing some new fight because you're not. You are continuing a journey. People had to be the forerunners. They had to clear out the wilderness and cut it down with machetes for us to run through, for us to continue to fight. They had to actually row the boat when now we got motors. Well, we have to be the engine that keeps up the fight of our resistance, and especially when we are a Black nation with dual citizenship and the United States and the Gullah Geechee Nation, there's a lot of resistance to that. So mm -hmm. we have to resist the resistance. And That's so, right. Mother Nizar, I appreciate you because you have always said that they'll be marginalized by our success. That's and right. those words have resonated with me, whether I'm at the United Nations, whether we were doing libations, whether we were marching in the street, protesting, right. all these things that we have done together since I met you. And it's just an honor to have your artwork in my in my house at different times. To, to, and I got it, you know, I ordered a few pieces. But I'm like, I got to get some other pieces from, you know, because yes. you keep coming out with great stuff um, that we have to have in our Gullah Geechee al Kibulan archive. And so Saturday, y'all will have a chance to see some of Brother Nazar's artwork featured in the Gullah Geechee Freedom Celebration. The Gullah Geechee Freedom Celebration is going to be our virtual celebration this year that we're having in celebration of this month, which is Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Awareness Month. We're going to broadcast live from the Sotili Theater in Charleston, and we've been talking about Charleston so much, right? But y'all can watch it from at home. All you have to do, go to eventbrite.com, look up Gullah Geechee Freedom Celebration. Go ahead now, get your ticket, get your registration done, which is free, so that on Saturday, when we go live, 
Eventbrite will send you the screen right there to watch it. You can also follow us on Facebook at Gullah Geechee Nation, the Gullah Geechee Nation Facebook fan page. And let me help y'all one more time. Gullah is spelled G-U-L-L-A-H, Geechee, G-E-E-C-H-E-E. -E -E. And a no I in Geechee if it a week, okay? So Gullah Geechee Nation, look for the Facebook fan page. We're going to broadcast live there. But if you subscribe to GullahGeechee.tv, GullahGeechee.tv, you can subscribe for free. This that we're talking about is going to be rebroadcasted there so you can share it with others, again, in your study groups as you also get the book Invisible War from GullahGeechee.biz because I know he done dropped a lot of science here today. If y'all think that's a lot for him, Y'all story. I know the man. He could go on for eight more hours. Okay. So y'all want to hear it again and y'all want to match it up with the y'all. Because I know some of y'all always say that, but is it true? Well, if you want the documentation, you want maps, you want imagery, get yourself a copy of Invisible War. You can get this. You can also get the Legacy of Evil Landing that we talked about that has the Gullah Wars in it and We Be Gullah Geechee. Uh, anthology that goes with this one. It's a bookend to this one. You can make sure to get all of them at gullahgeechee.biz. And if you're not sure again about the website to get Brother Nazar's artwork, just send us an email, g-u-l-l-g-e-e-c-o at aol.com gogeeko at aol.com and we will send you the direct link if you have any trouble finding it we'll send you the direct link but go to facebook and once you put in the african resistance struggle music it's gonna pop right up if you put in artist nizar n-i-z-a-r he's gonna pop right up you are going to see power filled images you could sit there for another hour just engage in speaking with the ancestors through their eyes in his artwork. It is powerful. Now, years ago, this brother, I could tell y'all, let's see, and I could leave him alone. That brother had pinned me, right? But then he was supposed to just adjust the pin. The brother go and raise the pin. Then I ain't see the pin no more. I want to know when I could be in this. <laughs> I part of the resistance exhibition and thing kind of, I ain't getting there yet. But let me see. Let me see if I can get an answer today. When it's I coming, Queen. I had it's, it's in the air. <laughs> it's in the air. It has to be the same way every time, y'all. <laughs> I'm pulling the vibe through my yeah. breasts, through my brushes. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. I hear you. But definitely, I know when the ancestors are speaking to you, um, it is amazing the power that's there. Um, that there's so many energies and so many voices that are yes. coming in simultaneously. They ain't but so many hands you got to paint at, <laughs> with at one time. So I ain't mad at you, but I'm waiting, I'm waiting. So definitely <laughs> before we close out today, why don't you go ahead and share um, any words that you would give of encouragement to those who still wanna do more and learn more about how to resist some of the stuff they're even dealing with today and dealing with, you know, Demantling, de dismantling racism. Well, first, they it's like this. I am because we are. We have to connect to right. the Gullah Geechee, uh, to, to you and the organization that's really, and the reason, I mean, I would recommend them reaching out to you and the network that's already been built and, trying to all, build and, and, and fortify themselves with with books and things uh, that we've always had to study in order that we know what we did in the past, because a great indicator of what you're going to deal with in the future is see what we have to deal with in the past. Right. And so when you fortify yourself with that and connect with people of like minds and spirit, that's really the only way. This is the, this is the other thing. When you sit in front of a fireplace, it, it doesn't matter what your, your your zodiac sign is. It doesn't matter what 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 school you went to and all of that stuff. You're going to get equal warmth. You're going to get that heat from that fireplace. So you got to get close to the uh, uh, pilot light is what I'm what I'm saying. Yeah. Those who actually have the wisdom and who have been there and done that. When you sit in the presence of that, that's the spirituality that we that we 
uh, have left behind and traded for this thing called religion. Okay, oh. and religion has actually led our people into a ditch when mm -hmm. in fact what we have was spirituality. spirituality. So th that, that, that's what I would suggest, uh, tap into the spirituality of our people uh, you know, and, and, and find books like the ones that you just showed them. And this is, this is one of the first That's editions. The original copy. And, and this is so, this, you know, and so fortify yourself with that knowledge. That's, that's what I would suggest to everyone. That is power filled. And we appreciate you for saying that because more often not this generation feels like anything that's older than one week, they should get rid of it. <laughs> and not not recognizing that um no that's not sustainability sustainability yeah. started before you and will that's continue it. after you and that's why we always give respect due to our ancestors then to our elders and then you deal with this generation trying to do better for the coming generations right. all of it being under god and mm -hmm. so you only gain that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And trust me again, my favorite proverb is wisdom is the principal thing. So get right. wisdom, but in get all wisdom. thy getting, get understanding. And mm -hmm. I like to say overstanding because we've been under too long. So we've got to stand over some things, That's look right. at it, but look with the elders and those who've lived this experience and let us teach you but you got to humble yourself to be teachable. Right. And right. here lies the problem. We're in a narcissistic generation that think they can teach themselves off of Google. But you can't get this spiritual energy from right. the internet. No, no. You can't. We can tell you some stuff, but you still yeah. ain't here to feel us in the right. way you would if we were all sitting underneath the oak tree and thing like that. And we've been the crack we teeth, but they should have seen it. So when Rona gone, I'm not sure I could come for seaweed. Fierce and fierce. But in the meantime, go to Gullah Geechee Nation .com. Gullah Nation Follow our blog. Follow the information there. You'll know when there are more broadcasts like this and when we are back out and about and hosting face-to-face -face events for you all to come and sit in that circle and absorb the spiritual energy and absorb the power and get the understanding you need to fight on as people of African descent around the world. But in particular, mm -hmm. the one where it did, yeah, what a Gullah Geechee and thing like that and part. We Gullah Geechee diaspora or the all yona, okay? And also follow at Gullah Geechee on Twitter and Instagram. We post things, we post all this information and definitely don't forget, subscribe for free to Gullah Geechee.tv. And thank you, thank you to all the hundred children who helping us to resist people teeth and we land from a neat we that continue to donate via cash app with dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation dollar sign Gullah Geechee Nation and at GoFundMe for the Gullah Geechee Land and Legacy Fund. GoFundMe recently did some shift where they moved to a new platform. So y'all saw that was on pause for a minute. It ain't on pause no more. People been donating all day today. So please continue to do that. Tell your family, tell your friends. This is how we're able to stay free and present to you our story, not filtered through somebody else's lens is because we have control of our narrative and we don't accept his story. We tell our story. So this is your part of the journey. So thank you, thank you for being here. I'll tell we story one more again, Brother Nizar. I hope these books shall fly off the out, gullahgeechee.biz on a chillin'. Make sure you put the www.gullahgeechee.biz It's working for we. Somebody in the chat room said it wasn't working for them. It's working for we. We ain't getting no gateway error on it at all. It's there. It's running. The book is up. It's for sale. Email us directly to G-U-L-L-G-E-E-C-O at AOL.com if you need any more information about when the next exhibits will be for Brother Nazar. But Saturday at noon, tune in to the Gullah Geechee Freedom Celebration live from the Gullah Geechee Nation right there at our Gullah Geechee Nation Facebook fan page and rebroadcast on Gullah Geechee.tv. So thank you, thank you, my brother Nazar. Truly, you've been a blessing to me and you're a blessing to all of we who still a fight for be free. Stay strong and stay healthy, everybody. Peace. Thank you. Peace.